Hey, I'm Rob from Producer Tech, and welcome to the Beginners course on Logic Pro. The course is suitable for complete beginners, as well as those with some experience already, and will give you a thorough understanding of the basics of working with this superb music making platform. This lesson is going to go through the basic window layout and workflow, covering the main areas of the software and what they do, before going through everything in much greater detail on the remainder of the course. I'll give you a super quick overview of all of the different ways you can make musical parts, so you can start to get an understanding of how songs are created. And we'll also cover how to get started with a new project and talk about the preferences a bit, so you know all of the main considerations when setting up the software. When you first open up Logic, you can choose to open a new or recent project, with a series of different factory templates for certain recording or producing scenarios. For example, there's an electronic option, which has a load of different drum and synth software instruments that can be fun to play around with. But we're going to open up a brand new empty project instead so we can start from scratch. The first thing you get here is the Tracks window, as every project needs to contain at least one track. The options you have are an audio track, which can contain audio samples or recorded audio, a software instrument track, which is one of Logic's built-in instruments or a third-party plugin from your collection, external MIDI is for using hardware synths, and then you have two additional options here. Guitar or bass is an audio track, but set up for guitar or bass recording, with guitar effects preloaded onto the track. And Drummer is Logic's fun and easy to use drum creation tool, which is a software instrument, but with a load of unique time-saving features. I'll go with software instrument for now though, which then loads the default instrument onto the first track in the project. And as the track is selected, you should be able to play it if you have a MIDI keyboard connected. Or if not, you can hit Apple K to open up the musical typing window, and then hit keys on your computer keyboard instead. One important thing to know about Logic, especially when first setting up, is the Preferences, which is where you define the main software settings. The main Logic Pro menu has an option for each section of the Preferences. Or you can simply hit Apple comma, as on any software, and then use the tabs at the top. We'll go through a few of these sections in any relevant lessons later on the course. But for now, I just want to quickly show you the audio preferences, which allow you to choose audio devices for routing sound in and out of Logic. Core Audio is the main Mac audio driver, so you'll almost always want this to be checked. Then below, you can see in the pop-up menu, we have options for the system setting, which is however your Mac is set up, or any built-in speakers on your computer. So you could choose this, and then connect headphones to the mini jack port to listen to audio that way, for example. Or you can choose an audio interface if you have one installed and connected, after which it will show up in the menu. The only other thing to mention is the buffer size below which is the amount of samples the selected audio hardware uses for the input and output. The larger this number, the larger the latency or delay, so the longer it takes audio to go in and out of the software, which can be a consideration when recording audio or playing software instruments. You ideally want to make this as small as possible, but going too small can lead to your computer's CPU overloading as it's working too hard, which can degrade the sound by incurring clicks and pops. So if you're noticing problems with the sound on playback, then check the buffer setting here. At the moment, I'm finding this setting of 128 samples to be totally fine. If you have a control surface of some kind, in other words, a controller keyboard or other hardware device with knobs or faders which has integrated or automatic control of Logic, then you can use Logic's control surface setup facility to connect it with the software. A MIDI keyboard with no Logic mappings should just be able to play instruments using the hardware keys without any setup required. But if you want to use other controls to adjust tracks or the mixer, then you'll need to use this control surface setup. It's found in the Logic Pro menu where there's a setup option. The window that pops up has a menu in the top corner with options for scanning all models or adding them manually yourself. You should check the controller's setup guide for exact instructions here. Sometimes scanning is fine, but at other times you need to choose install and then select a model from the list. A lot of controllers tend to use Mackie's Huey protocol which you can find in this list, and then click Add to place it in your list of control surfaces here. To open up the settings for these, you can control click and choose to show the inspector, where you can then see a whole load of options. The main ones to concern yourself with are the input and output ports, which you'll normally need to set to the input and output of your device. Sometimes it may have more than one port, so you'll need to look up which one to use. Then anytime you disconnect or reconnect the surface, Logic will tell you, and generally hook back up to it automatically when available. A simple way to start making music and getting ideas is to use audio loops and hits, 
meaning drums or other music samples, either recorded individually or as a phrase, which you can drag directly into your project. To do this, you can use Logic's file browser on the right, which you display with the switch at the end. In here, you can check out any files in the project, in media playing apps, or just anywhere on your computer. So I can now go to the root disk or home directory, and then browse to a folder on my computer with samples in, just by double clicking a folder to display its contents, and then either using the back arrow or clicking on a folder name to go back. I'm gonna choose a drum beat from Loopmaster's Soulful Breaks pack here. When you can see the samples in a list, you can just click on them and then hit the speaker symbol at the bottom or use the keyboard shortcut, control and spacebar to play the sample. The up and down arrow keys can be used to select different samples. Then when you found the one you want, you can just drag it into the arrangement into a space below our software instrument track, which will create a new audio track to place the sample on. You also get a window popping up asking you whether you want the tempo information in the sample to be used to set the tempo of the project, which we do want, so I'll go with that. And now to play the sample, I can just drag the playhead back to the start, or click on back to start on the transport, and then hit play or the spacebar. Rather than me having to drag the playhead back to the start over and over, I can just drag on the timeline at the top here to create this orange strip, which will then make the four bar sample loop continuously. If you don't have any sample packs, then another option is to use Apple loops, which are the pre-recorded loops that come with Logic. These are displayed using the next switch along, after which you can see a search facility grid here. You can also switch it to list mode if you prefer, but I'll keep it on the grid. Then I can choose bass and acoustic to find a nice bass loop. These upright ones are close to the tempo of our project, which is 115 beats per minute. As with normal audio samples, they adjust to the tempo of your project automatically when dragged in. So we've now got both our drums and bass locked to 115 BPM. And I might grab an organ loop too. The cool thing about Apple Loops is that they automatically adjust to the key signature of your project, which at the moment is C major. So this organ loop is actually a software instrument track being played by MIDI notes, rather than an audio sample. And it's only two bars long, so I'm going to have to loop the region itself, as well as having our entire arrangement looping. To do this, I just select the region and hit L. Then trim it back so the looping region is just four bars long. And finally, I'll adjust the levels on the track to balance the parts a bit better. There are sliders on the track header for doing this, providing the tracks are large enough. Now I've got some sounds in my project, I might change the instrument I've got on the first track and record something in to go with them. So I'll select the first track by clicking on it and then I'll open up the library. This section shows you all of Logic's patches, which are different sounds that you can load up on the selected track. These are channel strip settings or plugin presets, which have Logic's instruments set up a particular way and then processed. Then saved as patches so they can be instantly recalled. If I play my MIDI keyboard now, and then click on different patches, you can hear the track switches to playing that patch. What I might do is choose a clav, 
as we have an organ already in the project. When I found a nice patch, I'll just hit record on the transport to record in a phrase for it. And I'll loop that recorded MIDI region 2 now by hitting L. And bring the level down a bit as well. So we've got some nice sounds going on already in our project, and hopefully you've started to get an idea for some of the main ways musical parts are created, either using audio samples and loops, or different software instruments, which are played by MIDI notes that are contained within these regions in the arrangement area here. And all of these parts, so the audio regions that are making up the drums and bass, and the MIDI regions that are creating the organ and clav parts, can of course be edited extensively to change level, timing, or pitch. This can be done directly in the arrangement section, using the tools menu to change the function of the mouse for example, where we can use it to zoom into our 4 bar section, and then maybe slice up our regions and make some different edits. All regions can be edited using the editor sections below, such as the piano roll which allows you to change any of the MIDI notes in a region, for example. So now, you should be becoming a bit more familiarised with the main window layout and different sections of the software. Just to recap, we've seen the library, where patches are selected by choosing different instruments or types of sound, for instantly recalling software instruments or audio track settings, then there was the file browser for adding audio samples from your computer to a project, and Apple Loops browser for adding Logic's ready-made audio or MIDI loops, and we've just seen the editors, which are for more comprehensive editing of regions in the arrangement. And all of these sections are displayed using the switches on the control bar at the top. On there, you can also find buttons for displaying the smart controls, which are a simplified display of instrument mappings from the factory library for quickly adjusting important parameters in the sound, as well as a mixer button for opening up the project mixer, where you can now see all of our tracks, as well as effects returns and a master channel. And the different sections in the main window can be resized by dragging divides as you can see. And all these different sections can be opened up as different floating windows if preferred, which you can do by selecting them in the windows menu, or using the keyboard shortcut alongside. When working with Logic, keyboard shortcuts make things a lot quicker so they're a good thing to learn, with all the keys on the computer keyboard having different functions as you can see. This is something we'll look at as we progress through the course, to help with customising your workflow. So that was just a brief intro to Logic then. Of course, we've only just scratched the surface, and we'll be going through things much more slowly and thoroughly on the remainder of the course. Don't forget, if you get stuck at any point, then there's support available via email or on the forum. And also before moving on, make sure you download the course materials, so you get all the accompanying written notes, logic projects, free samples and software. That's it for now, see you next time.